Bueno, we're officially at that point where many of us have broken that resolution about eating better. Oye, no es fácil, mi gente. But you know what does make it easy to be healthier? Um, dairy, yeah, los productos lácteos. De leche a queso, even yogurt. Your favorite dairy products have calcium, protein, zinc, and riboflavin, which helps your body use carbs, fats, and protein for fuel. Plus, who doesn't love saying riboflavin? <laughs> Incorporating dairy into your diet is so easy, you can do it year-round, not just for the new year. To learn more about all dairy's many health benefits, benefits, just visit floridamilk.com or lechedeflorida.com today. Okay, one more time. Riboflavin. <laughs> hey everyone, this is DJ. And this is Ish. And this is Season 7 of Better, Better Let Me Tell You. you. To you, to get to our listeners. Yeah, we drove all night to get to our listeners. We drove, well, we I think I feel like we did once. When? Well, we didn't really drive, but we flew all night. Uh, when we went to LA, yeah, when it was almost live. Right, yeah. the first time we went to LA. Yes, yeah, so it was almost in LA <laughs> several times for Pedro. Let me tell yes, you, but uh, it was almost a live cast. Welcome everybody to episode two eighty five of. Yes, Pedro, you got it off the bat. Look at it, that. It, you... We're in the middle of uh, February. Oh. <laughs> oh, well, I, mean, I don't know. The middle is good. You said that like if the middle of February was like, you know, sweeps week when I'm on top of everything. Like, <laughs> the middle, the most off tr- the middle, I feel, is the most um, misinformed, misconstrued, uh, misunderstood position there is. That was a lot of M's. Because a lot of people are like, oh, you're in the middle. You're in the middle child. You're in the middle seat in the oh, eye, in the row. Middle of the but week. Then, but then, you know, the middle of an ice cream cookie is the ice cream. Oh, that's true. The middle of a bomb bomb is a sweet filling. Yeah, but it's almost always gone gone. <laughs> <laughs> the middle of something stuffed is cr- usually creamy. Oh. Why do I not like where this is going? <laughs> I think we're going to quit while we're ahead because we may have to put a parental warning on this episode if, this, if we go down this route. Uh, I, you know what I would totally have right now? I'm just going to assume a bonbon? A caramel frap from McDonald's. From McDonald's. I don't like the Starbucks one. Okay. You know that when I... Well, well, well first of I all, like, well, welcome, 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 welcome listeners. Happy welcome. Beto Friday. Happy Beto Friday. Um, hope everybody had a great Valentine's Day. Yes. And that yes. everybody's enjoying their half-off candy now. It, yeah, it, actually, it's funny because I'm, I'm seeing a friend of ours this weekend, and I literally today went to CVS to get the little chalk hearts because they were... You son of a bitch. You did too? No. That's my thing with our friend. Well, they were 75 cents. Oh. <laughs> that's my thing with... Never mind. Anyway, um... <laughs> So, where was I going with this? Uh, I'm not sure, but it's the end of the week. Uh, Valentine's Day. Valentine's Day. Oh, the caramel frap at McDonald's. So, yes, anyway, yes. so as you listeners know, I don't drink coffee, any coffee, That's no true. coffee, like nothing. Not even coffee flavored things. Do you want to see me out of my element and uncomfortable? Send me to a Starbucks. Whenever I go to Starbucks, I feel very out of place. Like, I feel like go in and go out. Usually it's to get somebody else's order. I think you know? I'm gonna I'm gonna increase your your discomfort factor, and somehow I'm gonna put a Starbucks inside a Comic Con. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I just feel like when whenever I've ordered something in Starbucks, like I'm like I don't know how to order. <laughs> like, what's the venti? What's the uh, okay. grande? If it makes you feel better, I still don't know. Right, right. like that talk they have a venti, a venti frappy frappy mako mako whatever <laughs> you know. Like it's funny because like I. <laughs> I don't even know what I'm saying because, like, I, I that's I don't think that's a I thing, but I want Starbucks. it to be. It's funny because, like, when we would go to uh, Tristan's doctor, um, there's a Starbucks in that shopping center, oh, yeah, sure. and Tristan would always want to go to Starbucks, and I always be like, I was like, what? Am, who am I? Like, why am I here? Like, I feel so uncomfortable. Like, this is not my gym. and it's not even because obviously Starbucks has like a coffee house feel and it's warm <laughs> right, and inviting, right, but right. I'm like. That person that'll be looking in the menu, and I'm like, I don't know what none of this is. Like, you I don't just know. get the dragon fruit tea, right? I do, yeah. Like, what's a refresher? Yeah, <laughs> which usually that's what I end up ordering. I end up ordering that milky pink thing, yeah. Again, parental guidance suggested now. I don't no. know <laughs> that milky pink thing that has dried strawberries. In it oh, way. yes, okay, okay, yeah. I, I don't order it, but I know yeah. what you're talking about, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll do that, and then I'll get you know, I don't know. 
some like a brownie or a cake pop. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, what? <laughs> it's funny because like this Starbucks in particular, the one that was by Tristan's doctor, right next to it was a Dompang. And I rico. and I always be like, Can we go to Tristan, can we go to Dompang instead? He's like, No, I wanna Dom- go to Starbucks. Dompang's not cool. He likes Starbucks. he likes the sous vide egg bites. <laughs> They are good. Yeah, they are. They are good. But I feel, again, they're I'm, always so hot. I'm not a Starbucks person because I don't drink any coffee. That's and true. And then if I want to have a good juice, I'll just go to Jamba Juice. That's true. You do Isn't love it fun it, to say Jamba Juice. You do love an alliteration. Yeah, Jamba Juice. Yes. Um. Anyway, <laughs> well, we were singing. I drove all night. Yes. As our cold opening today. Yes. You know what's so funny? Three very big people have sung that song. I think we've had this conversation. Roy know, Orbison, I, Cindy Lauper, and Celine have Dion. Have we had this conversation on air? I don't think we have. Okay. And to me, I know that Roy Orbison is the original. Right. And then it was Cindy Lauper, obviously, in the 80s, right. and, then and then Celine Dion. I mean, three very big, iconic yeah, people. Yeah, of course. To me, I completely forget that Roy Orbison and Celine Dion sang that song. To me, it's Cindy Lauper. It's only Cindy Lauper who sings that song. It's so funny because when I hear the Celine version, I'm like, oh, this is by Cindy Lauper. <laughs> but when I hear the Cindy Lauper version, I'm like, oh, this is by Roy Orbison. <laughs> So Celine redid did a Cindy, cover right, of Cindy's song. Right. And Cindy did a cover of Roy's Exactly. Song. That's that is how I, I always think of it when I hear it. I don't just go back to Roy. No, no, no. Right. I, I go back to me that song, progressively. That song doesn't exist like out of Cindy Lauper. Cindy Lauper. That was in her second album, right? In the I think colors. So. I think so, yeah. I feel that's past um Girls Just Wanna Have Fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was definitely a sophomore album. Do you like that song? Girls Just Wanna Have Fun? Yeah. I do because of the nostalgia element of it. Yeah, I I think it is. It, I, I, I I remember watching it as of the video. The that video, video was, fun. was so, in, but that video was in such rotation. Yeah, and when I see that video now, like I think about what I would think of when I was a kid, like the part with the with the girls' heads are in the bubbles. Yes, I love that part. And this guy, what's his name? Captain Lou Albano. Rest, yes, the wrestler. Mm-hmm. Yep. Like I remember all that, like as a kid, and what I thought and all that. So yes, it's very nostalgic. Yeah. It gives me all the you know the warm feelings. Warm yeah, feelings. Yeah. With that said, I can't stand the song. That is a very it, it's a very typical '80s gimmick pop song, mm-hmm. and I think that that's the type of song that it did what it did. It it, it broke her through, mm-hmm. and then she she's so unusual. She is so unusual. <laughs> but I think even she understood to a degree. She's like, okay, I'm an actually talented singer. I write my own music. But you know what? I need radio to play something. Did she write that write that song? I'm sure she did, yeah. but you know, but but again, she's very talented. I mean, she plays like the fucking zither or whatever that thing yeah. is that she plays, you know. So, she, I think she, whether her 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 record company was very much like, this is radio friendly. Mm-hmm. Let's just go this. Route. I might be the only person out there that whose favorite Cindy Lauper song is um, "Who Let in the Rain." <laughs> that song is so good. That's a good song. That is such a good. song. That's a good song. Is that from Hat Full Stars? I, I don't know. That was much much later. I think it yeah. was like late '80s, early '90s. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, but I mean, not that I, and it's nothing against Cindy Lauper. I mean, she's great and I love her. I can't say I have too much of the Cindy Lauper catalog, but, um, and I do like, I drove all night. Well, like, her, well, her greatest hits album, 12 Deadly Sins. Mm-hmm. When you listen to them, you're like, actually, you know what song I, know I really everyone like? Of these. Um, como se llama? The one um, from the Goonies? Cause I'm waiting for a change of heart. Change of heart. It just takes a. That song is great. Yeah, that song is really, really good. No, I'm not a fan of the Goonies one. No, no, Aww. no. You know that? That's sort of how I feel about the Goonies too. Really? I know I'm breaking hearts right now. So I respect <sighs> the Goonies. We're, we're I will listeners. totally say that I'm of the Goonies You'll go generation. To Matt, right? I will defend the Goonies. You know, and anybody, anybody who's talking shit about it. Right. But I don't have a connection with that movie. That was not one of my favorite movies growing up. I can't say that I that I have that movie like committed to memory at all. But it gives me warm fuzzies. Right. Because of what it meant. And right. Right. I I do think Goonies was like right before our age. Yes. Like. I think if we had been maybe a year or two older, yeah, it would have hit. But we were still, hit we were still close enough in age right. that we remember how big the Goonies were. Yeah, yeah. Um, and again, I I respect it for what it is. I love it for what it is, and the nostalgia factor. Yeah. I look at it very like lovingly. But for example, I it, the, the, I don't have an attachment with that movie like I do. For example, with ET. Yes, that's like, actually the first I, movie I, I remember w- seeing in theaters. Yeah, me too. And it's funny because I remember seeing that movie in the movie theater, and I must have been like two and a half. I think they re-released it. No, I, no, no, no. They must have re-released it because I remember being a little older. 
So they must have re-released it. Maybe. I remember I saw it in the first run. And and when I do the math in terms mm-hmm. of when it was released, right. I'm like, it was like I was like, I don't even think I was three. But somehow I sort of remember. And I remember I saw it in Ambassador 3, which is on 107th and Flagler. Well, well, it's not there anymore. Yeah, yes, it was. Now it's a Fiesta Palace. Oh, well. <laughs> I mean, is that an upgrade? But, you know, I don't I ha- know. I have a connection with like that movie. I have a connection with like Clue. Um, although Clue's a little bit later. Yeah. yeah. But not not, not um, Goonies. And that's like, se. for example, the John Hughes movie mm. movies. But that that I get because that we were young, we were too young to appreciate those movies in that right, in but, that way. But the thing with the when John Hughes out. movie. I don't have any attachment to sixteen can. Yeah, well, those movies are before our time. Yes, yeah, that's we what were I'm too saying. small that's when they came out. Right, but the but of those movies, the one that I watched over and over and over and over as a kid that I could almost recite is a Breakfast Club. Well, of course, it's fucking. But iconic. the other ones, I don't like Sixteen Candles. I think I've seen maybe two or Handful. three times. Weird Science. Um, igual. También um, say anything. También. I don't think I've ever seen say anything. Um, what's the other Molly Ringwald one? Um, uh, the, the, the one she's poor. <laughs> oh, Pretty in Pink. Pretty in Pink. I was think that, I've seen Pretty in Pink dress. like once or twice. Um, like I get the whole. What's his name? Jack Ryan. Jake Ryan. Jake Ryan. Jake Ryan. Wait, who's Jack? Jake Ryan. Yeah, Jack Ryan is is uh, the spy <laughs> character played by Tom Cruise. I think. <laughs> Like I, I know the whole Jake Ryan of it all. Right, right. I, I know all that, but those movies, I have no attachment to those movies. Yeah. But Breakfast Club, yeah. Even my nephews love Breakfast Club, but it's so good. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm saying, talk about a movie it's that like, man, to the test of time. Claire was ahead of her time. Claire was having sushi in 1985. It's true. Like who had sushi back then? Claire. <laughs> Because you know what? I don't remember as a kid people talk I mean, I realize I wasn't the demographic. Yeah, that's true. But I don't remember people talking about sushi in the like early the, 90s. No, but the 80 the eighties was when sushi's came sushi came into play, but it came into play as a very yuppie frou frou thing. Mm-hmm. So that was the joke. Whereas now we were sushi, eating the chong. We were eating the chong. <laughs> <laughs> look, look, the more things change, the more they say the same. Whereas now sushi is more universal, I yeah. feel. Yeah. yeah. Kids are eating sushi. It's at Publix for Christ's sake. <laughs> I mean, I mean, it's gonna. I'm surprised it hasn't made it to kids' menus in schools. I'm sure. Well, you know, fish sticks <laughs> is really just fried sushi, uh, riceless fried sushi, riceless fried sushi. But yes, um, yes absolutely. But yeah, that's a, that's a great song. So yes. So Change. so right. I just want to say here, yes, listeners, how are you doing? Yes. Uh, how, how's it going? Are, are you? Are, is this the corner where we where we talk about how we predicted the non-important it future? Absolutely. Is. Okay. So <laughs> if you recall last week, I actually even. Was gonna post the video That's of right, it. You didn't. Where I and I even edited it. It's in my phone. I even mm. edited it to post it, but I was just didn't around to posting it. Yeah, do it now. When I said, you know, last Friday, I was like, hmm, Usher. If he brings somebody out, it should be Alicia Keys. And if it's Alicia Keys, they should do um, my boo. Uh, well, well, I, oh, well, obviously well. they're gonna do my boo. But right. I said they yes. should do some of her songs, yeah. and I could see it. Uh, this song, yeah, yeah, yeah. some people want yeah. it as a duet, and there, there we, we were. Go. <laughs> and we were watching it together. I'm like, once again, I'm surprised how you and I predict things. But sometimes. we don't predict things that matter. I know, like, <laughs> but we predict things nonetheless. Like, can we predict the lottery? Yeah, we predict things nonetheless. This like, is true. N- never. It's been a. It's been. You know, thing. we pr- we predict f- Nicole Kidman's Fiorenta, Madonna residency. So. Now that we're talking about the Super Bowl oh, um, okay. and all that and halftime, and halftime was great. Yes, um, it was. If you say otherwise, I don't even understand what planet you're on. So I really like the halftime show because I love Usher. My, my only sort of quibble? Uh, yeah, it's not even criticism. I just felt so many times there were so many things going on on stage. Yes. And okay. there were so many people that Usher, Usher got lost. But he roller skated and, for us, goddammit. Right. And for Usher to get lost, it's like, That's true. I mean, listen, Little John was there, and I'm all I'm all for that. Yes. I, Luda? I, 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 I mean, my Luda, outfit's ridiculous. Uh, I, mean, I mean, he says, my outfit's ridiculous, and they cut to uh, Jermaine Dupri. Anyway, um... Well, his I outfit, am. his outfit was ridiculous. It was, he, but, he looked but, like a pilgrim. <laughs> but listen, it's a Super Bowl. But um, I, I, I mean, I give it a passing grade. I give it an A. But there were moments that I'm like, okay, there's about five thousand people on stage, and some of them were being <laughs> propelled in the air, right? So where's Usher? Oh, there he is. Um, but no, overall it was great, um, and he's awesome. So I just wanted to talk about the Travis Kelsey and Taylor Taylor Swift of it all because I'm sure a lot of listeners, you know. 
you know, most of you saw it. It's, it's actually the highest rated Super Bowl. Yes, that is true. And, um, you know, something that I, I, I had heard of um, going into the Super Bowl, and I sort of had it. We hadn't talked about it here because I didn't want to continue with the rumor. Although, actually, we had mentioned we, it here. Uh, the conspiracy The conspiracy yeah. theory of Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey. And it's like, it's just incredible to me how we live in a day and age where just people will, will literally just make anything up from just thin air. Yeah, whole cloth. This whole thing of Taylor Swift and Travis that, that Kelsey the fix was in. being, uh, you know, being right. uh, some type of political like puppet that they're going to endorse Joe Biden, and that that's why they was, had to win the Super this Bowl. Was all and, fixed. Yeah. I mean, th- I mean, this is like well, absurd like, well, that like there is like anybody. Last week, the mental gymnastics that you would have to do to believe this. It's just absurd to me that anybody would think that all of this is a conspiracy. Like, let me just say this. A conspiracy from a legal standpoint is when there is a meeting of the minds of more than one person to commit the crime in fact. Mm -hmm. So you are talking about thousands of people that would have to be in on this conspiracy. Thousands of people. And it's just incredible to me how there are grown ass people who actually believe this and actually out of thin air continue to build a narrative about them. It's like, let me tell you something about the uh, Kansas City winning the Super Super Bowl. They had a one in two chance of winning. Right, it was a fifty fifty shot. It was a fifty fifty shot. Right. So just in the law, law like the probability, basically, pro- basic probability and arithmetic, they had a one in two chance. Right. And and in 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 math, when you have a one in two chance, that's a pretty high chance, right? right? Despite, but they won last year, despite the fact that they currently are in a winning streak. They won the Super Bowl last year. Right. They've had several winning seasons. Um, just like many teams in the past go through phases where they're winning. So it's yeah, just it's, incredible to me how people just completely make this out of thin air. And then it's like everything. When you want to build a narrative you will about something, it. you will pit point different things. Yep. You will cut and paste here and there and build your narrative. El que busca encuentra. People continue to believe this. I can't tell you how many people I saw the next day in the only in date se- comment section just saying that the game was fixed. So now, now we just sort of should accept the fact that we live in a society or in a world where where, where yeah. what you want doesn't win. It's fixed. It's yeah. fixed. Well, but, and but, that's isn't, just, but isn't that that's the world just, we've been living in for the last four years? That's just where we are nowadays. That like if what you don't get your way and whoever you don't want wins, it's fixed. And this whole Travis Kelsey Taylor Swift thing is just ridiculous. It's ridiculous. And all these freaking grown ass people like questioning this, like, you know what? Like, go worry about other bigger things. If you're really worrying about this, you don't have a lot of things going on in your yeah, life. You, because yeah. it's just insane and you know i i will finish it with this i think in this day and age especially with social media i think people that sort of believe in conspiracy theories and want to sort of um accept conspiracy theories Mm -hmm. i think there's a certain element to thinking you're smarter than the general populace in 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 the in the sense that oh bro like this is what it is Right. This is what it is, because it makes you feel like you have a certain amount of power in terms of the way that you assess your knowledge. And it makes you feel that you have an upper hand over the general consensus and general populace on a matter when in reality you look like a dumb fuck. Sorry. Sorry. These are probably all just people who watch Lost. (laughs) (laughs) Don't even throw me with Lost. I mean, if you don't like Taylor Swift, don't like Taylor Swift. If you don't if like you don't Travis like, Kelsey, if they don't if like they, him, if they, if if they weren't think, your team, if then you that's think fine. the Chiefs suck, they suck. That's fine. That's fine. But oh, please, like, get another hobby, dude. Like, get, really, get another hobby. Get another pastime. Go back to get playing, a hobby. Get to, go back to playing. What is it? War of Warcraft, uh, World of Warcraft, uh, whatever the hell. Call of, du- Call of Duty. Call of Duty. Grand Theft Auto. Go, yeah. yeah, go go back to that. Just go back to that. Yeah, yeah. No, I think. I mean, look, you're, we're not saying anything new here, and we're not going to reinvent the wheel but i just think it's it, it is kind of what you were saying which i think is an interesting element which is i think there are a lot of people who who buy into conspiracy conspiracy theories that 
I, and I'm going to make a sweeping generalization who probably don't have a lot going on in their own lives. And they are looking for something, like you said, to make themselves seem smart. I'm not saying they're not smart, but they may have feelings of, you know, like self-esteem issues or whatever, where maybe they feel like other people are always making them feel less than. And now this is their opportunity to be like, you see, you see, I know something you don't because you are too blind to the truth, capital T. And it's just not. It's you're grasping at straws nine times out of ten. And again, you can make a connection out of so many things if you really want to. Mm hmm. Like you can again, right? Like in theory, if you want to create, like you and I tomorrow could sit down and create a conspiracy theory out of something. I'm sure we could figure out how to connect Look, enough I rem- dots. I remember to when, do it when after 9/11, I read the whole 9/11 Commission report. I have the book there on my bookshelf because like, of you course you did. Um, and you know all the theories of people on the falling of World Trade Center. Number oh, because seven. the second building didn't this and, right. right? So. <laughs> it, it, it's just incredible how there were people who believed that 9-11 was an inside job because World Trade Center 7 collapsed later in the day, right? And there have been engineers, you know, that have talked and talked and talked. But it doesn't matter, Darian. No, about those engineers are all Trade, paid off. But, but, but let me, let, They're let all me, paid let me tell off. You all this, of them. But let me tell you them. this. The way that World Trade Center collapsed, you know, hours after 9-11, after the initial collapse in 9-11 of the Twin Towers... It, it did look like a scheduled demolition, right? Mm-hmm. It did because of the way it collapsed, right. right? So whenever you see these scheduled demolitions on TV or wherever, what's the first thing you hear before the building actually falls? The explosion. The explosion right. of like the 5,000 tons of dynamite. Of TNT, yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So did they have silent dynamite? Because there's no explosion. Wasn't that a black exploitation film? <laughs> there's no explosion. Like there's no explosion when this building collapsed. Right. Right. No explosion whatsoever. And there were cameras everywhere. And by that time, the press, the media, every everybody was down at the ground zero. Right. Right. There's no somebody would have heard. Right. There's no explosion. Right. There was no evidence of of uh, of de- detonation. Right. But but people built this whole theory. That the whole 9-11 is an inside job because of that. Because of that. And there's no demonstrable evidence. And if you don't know what demonstrable evidence is, well, go then, look at well, it. Well, you don't know the word um, demonstrative. You know, people build up these whole narratives on circumstantial evidence, which, as we know, you can't build a story based on circumstantial yeah. evidence. Because if you do, then you can explain anything. Because, right. again, you're, pick point, you're cutting and pasting what... Well, that's that's why prosecutors right? are so loath to take a... a case to court with circumstantial <laughs> yes law and order yes, university you see um well i mean but you did but i'm not wrong TV, i did yeah, but i'm not, not wrong. wrong yeah you can't base a case on circumstantial right. evidence you could use circumstantial evidence to to in addition to right, other to narrate forms the story of evidence that you have right um but you can't build a case right. especially that strong like 9-11 yeah. is an inside job and look i'm not saying that the united states government isn't like this innocent it, 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 cl- you know, I'm sure clean, the, clean hands i'm sure right. the, the united states government has done some shady shit that we can even start to imagine yeah but to build this whole narrative that 9-11 was an inside job simply because of way of a building collapsed i mean that is a reach. Gone. like that is a huge reach and again all the people that would have to be involved in that conspiracy right right and that many people can't keep a secret of course not of course not <laughs> like, that's that's you, the key you, to you, all these things you, is you're talking thousands upon thousands and thousands of people and nobody told a nobody, secret nobody. because let me tell you something right now <laughs> listeners if I'm ever involved in some type of conspiracy, at bare minimum, you will know. I know. Because I can't keep that secret. No, no, no. I'm going to be like, oye, no le digas a nadie. Pero. Pero. You know, so, like, ta-dun, ta-dun. Yeah, somebody's got to tell somebody. I, can you imagine if all along there's people who've... Um know where Amelia Earhart was, but they're like, ah, it's better just to keep the... the she the, wanted privacy. She wanted privacy. <laughs> you know. She got tired of flying. I read I read stuff on her all the time. Really? Yeah, because I find it just... It, One of the last great mysteries. tragic, and, and I mean, clearly she fell in the middle of the ocean. Like, there's right. no doubt about this. But just... the What I find so interesting about the whole Amelia Earhart thing is that it's such a mystery, but at the same time it isn't. Because, again, clearly she fell Uh, in the middle of the ocean. Like, there's no... But we just never found her. We just never found her, right. 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 But still people are like, what happened to Amelia Earhart? Like She's with that that Taiwan flight. 
Oh, they eventually found it. Oh, they did? Yeah, a oh. while later. Oh, okay. But, you know, they eventually found it. I mean, it was a Malaysian flight. Malaysian, Malaysian. I mean, what was what was really odd about the Malaysian flight is that for a really long time, they didn't find any debris. Right. It was like it evaporated. Right. Yeah, um, yeah. But they eventually did, and they did find debris. Yeah, um, yeah that was terrible. This episode is sponsored by BetterHelp. We're well into the new year and you're probably trying to figure out how to keep those New Year's resolutions. You know who could help with that? Our friends at BetterHelp. So often we focus on external factors when trying to make changes in our lives when the key is actually improving our mental well-being. BetterHelp offers various customized therapy options like phone, video, text, or even live sessions, all with a certified therapist. Your mental health deserves to happen on your time, right? And BetterHelp can match you with a therapist in 48 hours in most cases. And as a special offer for Pero Let Me Tell You listeners, you can get 10% off your first month of professional therapy at betterhelp.com slash pero. It's already more affordable than in-person therapy. Now you can also save on your first month. Self-improvement isn't just a New Year's resolution. It's a lifelong journey and BetterHelp can help you take the first step on that path. That's BetterHelp. H-E-L-P dot com slash pero. Thanks again to BetterHelp for sponsoring this podcast episode. It was. Shall we move on to something a little less terrible? Yes. Okay. (laughs) So I... Let's keep it lively on this Friday. So I want to bring up... I want to bring up two topics, but I want to wrap them into one heading. Mm. Um, The heading being... We've used this term before, white nonsense. Is it who I think it, you're going to talk about? Oh, it's the, two It's two things. The video that I sent you? It, it's that, but something else that I got from Stephanie from Mamas and Merlot. Uh, w- white nonsense? Okay. Let's go. So we've got... I, I always like myself some... W- we've got a double whammy of white nonsense mm-hmm. today. All right. So, you know, if there's one thing that white people love, as we've talked about, like with the whole camping... Caucasians. Cauca- with the whole camping thing, right? Is like this bizarre, like... I want to do poverty, but I want to pay a lot for it, right? So two things, again, you sent me this video, and it's this this white couple. I mean, there's no way, like these people. They're influencers. They're influencers, but I mean, they might as well just, they're, they're so white, they might as well be like sponsored by Hellman's. Like they're just that white. They walk around, that's not that they walk around barefoot. It's that they walk around barefoot because it's healthier and you commune with nature or some bullshit. But then they go and they have cut up the soles of all their shoes. And these are not like Marshall's shoes. Like, I mean, I don't know if they're expensive necessarily, but you can tell they're not like cheap leftover pay less shoes. So they cut the soles so they can walk barefoot into stores because, you know, that way we're allowed to go in and no one sees it. Da, 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 da. But I'm going to I'm going to put that one aside for a minute and tell you the other thing that I found out today is that do you know what the latest trend is in wedding venues? I do, actually. You do? Yes. Abandoned jails? Abandoned jails, yeah. Abandoned jails. Abandoned jails. I just want to let that sit with listeners for a minute. Mm -hmm. There are people out there who are like, you know, it's the happiest day of my life. You know what's going to make it much more beautiful? Alcatraz. Yeah. Right. What the fuck is wrong with you? Mm Mm-hmm. Like, like, first of all, who had this idea? Like, let's start with that, right? Mm-hmm. Also, I guarantee you ain't no black or Latino people doing this. No. Okay? Cause <laughs> and that's, we ain't camping either. Because we're not camping and we're not going around barefoot on purpose. But it's like, what is wrong with these people? Mm-hmm. What is wrong with them? Like, what is wrong with the, those barefoot so, fucks? So I think... And I, and I, I mean, again, we can, we can explore all of this. I, I was talking to our friend earlier yeah, yeah. this week about it, and... I don't know if she's the one who mentioned it to me. I think the the people we're talking about, and I think that we should repost that video on our site. Yes, we should. Um, so people could see it. You know, I'm I'm the first one that it's like, you know, drink, marry, be merry, be happy, do, do whatever what you, you want. Do what you want, do you. But the problem that I have with these people um, walking, I mean, if they want to walk barefoot, be barefoot on all the filth that is on, on the street. You wanna, oh, no, no, no. And did you see the video? Because there's the video that the they one. have of them cutting the soles off yes, their Yes, I saw that one. But then there's other videos of them just walking in the city barefoot. And then when they get to a crosswalk, they press the button with their feet. Like the button for you to cross All right. with their feet. Even Annie Lennox would have a problem with this. And she walked on broken glass. <laughs> so, <laughs> Take a winner. Yeah. So, um... You know, my problem with it and, you know, to sound social justice warrior, right. right, is that these people are cutting the bottom of their shoes when there's so many people, not even around the world, just in the United States, yeah. like 
in poverty that need basic essentials like, like shoes. shoes. Right. I mean, freaking you know, Bombas kids, kids donates that, kids shoes that for this reason. Shoes to go to school. Yeah. Kids, you know, people that need shoes to go to work. Right, and these people are are going out and cutting the bottom of their shoes, and they're doing it so proudly, right? Again, and they cut the bottom it, of all their shoes, like they, they you know they own a chase shirt, and 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 you know it's one of those things that like I know the word privilege is tossed around no, today but this is indicative all the time, but this is like textbook yeah, privilege, yeah, right? That you are so you think you're so you're so privileged that you don't even realize the recklessness of your actions and the fact that you're putting it on social media, right? right? So I forget who I was talking to earlier today, if it was my friend or maybe you or whatever, that they were telling me that a lot of these people that are influencers, um, you know, they don't have a brand. They just post things, right? That they do what's called outrage um, posts to get up the algorithm. That makes total sense. Because you know that people are going to be totally... Well, we've said it before. What are the What gets priority? People are going to be totally on fire about that. Yeah. And they're going to reshare the video and repost it. Look at these bozos, but they're getting views. Yeah, hate watching is still watching. Right, so yeah. it's, it's it goes back to that old saying: bad publicity is still publicity. There's no such thing as bad so, publicity. So yeah. you know, in terms of social media, you're still getting a view when you go to your reels. That you're going to be in the millions. Fair enough, even but, if, but but even then, if for a negative thing. Okay, fair enough, but like I, I, I'm going to flip it a little bit where it's like, okay, great. What brand is going to associate themselves with you? And I'm genuinely asking this. Obviously, it's not a shoe brand, <laughs> right? I mean, let's start with let's let's cross that one off the list. Like, what is it going to be like? A foot lotion, mm -hmm. maybe band aids. I, you know, so so yes. Now you're an influencer who's trying to get your lifestyle across. But what what are you going to gain from it? Because I can't just, see a brand associating with this. You know, it's horrible, and I see things all the time on social media that I'm just like I shake my head at. And I'm like, what the hell are these people doing? But this one really bothered me. This one really bothered me because this one, these weren't people out there living their life. These are people that are so, again, so privileged and so self-righteous. Right. That they made that this their thing. It, they don't, it doesn't even cross their mind how they're being completely insensitive and dismissive to the reality of so many people that are in poverty and so many people that can't afford shoes and so many people that like have one pair of shoes right you know which is a problem again it's a problem all over the world but you don't even have to go that far you just in your community, in community yeah. i'm sure there's people who homeless people yeah. let's let, let's let's right. let's let's take it on the, the most basic right. level right right so if you're you know, I, w I would argue that if you want to walk with, if you want to cut the soles of your <laughs> shoes, right? Because the whole thing with them is that they have to walk, they have to cut the soles of their shoes because, you know, in some places you they have to have, you, yeah. there's no. a shoe policy. <laughs> no, you no, to, no shirt, no shoes, go, no service. You can't go barefoot. <laughs> so in order to circumvent, circumvent that, they cut the soles of their shoes so they could look like they're wearing shoes, but the, the, bottom the, of their the foot sole. the sole of their foot is exposed to right. the elements so they're barefoot right? so you know my question to them would be well um if you're so about because we're doing that supposedly because of the benefits of, of being barefoot, barefoot yeah, yeah. right so if you're so concerned about benefits and health and all that you know why don't you cut the soles on you know so, some of your shoes and then donate the rest right because obviously you don't care about shoes which is fine right. Right, but you could do something good out of your... But they do care about shoes because the shoes that they have and that they cut mm -hmm. are name brand shoes. Of course. Right? I bet you they wouldn't do that to a pair of Louis Vuitton. Right. right. No, but, but okay. They ain't doing that to a pair of red bottoms. Uh, uh, I'm sure. Listen, I'm, I'm sure, sure that if they would... How does one do freaking... a barefoot heel? <laughs> listen, listen. <laughs> I'm sure that freaking Louis Vuitton will like sue them. <laughs> like Some type of brand infringement, they, they I'm sure. find some way I'm, of suing them. I'm you sure. Know? I'm sure. You know? I'm, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but again, those are things that it's like, caballero, like, I need you to stop and think like it's of renting out a freaking prison mm -hmm. to have your wedding. In. That's like, uh, I, I was speaking to our friend about this earlier. Like that's what like, kind of lily like goes with incarceration? People that rent out plantations. Okay. Okay. Yes. A plantation is pretty. But at least a plantation is is an outdoor venue. It's right. pretty. Like there's, right. I, 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 look, it, I'm not saying it's not got its its issues and whatnot. But you can't compare a plantation just visually a plantation. Visually, you can't visually, a plantation to a jail, right? Visually, you can't. I mean, even if we're just going to go aesthetic. However, 
I just don't understand how anybody can rent. Yes, a plantation is very pretty. I've taken plantation tours, you know, in Louisiana, right. you know, 20 years ago, right? right? I just don't understand how you can rent that for a celebratory event without how you can rent that without under not even understanding without acknowledging the history of that right mm -hmm. because we're not talking now that this is not up for argument the history of right. violence of a plantation even though it seems very pretty i mean it is pretty visually yes, yes 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 but the history of that right right i don't understand how in your whole thought process on you're like hmm, let's do our wedding in a plantation you're like well but maybe we shouldn't because like Okay. Slavery was here and t people were tortured. But I think you know? a plantation, I would do a plantation before I would do a jail. No, I wouldn't do I, it either. I, I'm sure, I, but okay, but these are my options. You know, I'm sure that says something about me, but you know what? A, ja a jail, like a jail is literally, like what? It's not enough to call your wife the ball and chain. Now you got to have a fucking prison too. Mm. Yeah. I just, I don't get it. I don't understand. Again, this has been white nonsense. Thank you for coming to my TED talk. <laughs> no, they'll be like, "Oh, can we do a wedding at Auschwitz?" Like, I mean, you know, lo que falta. <laughs> like, lo que falta. There's a lot of trees, you know. Yeah, exactly. There's a lot of brick buildings. <laughs> so much vegetation. Yeah, you know, oh, these people are horrible. Oh my god, I actually saw something shifting gears. <laughs> I laughed like an idiot. There was a guy on. Um, on uh, social media, on Instagram, of course it was on social media, on Instagram, that he's like, a, he's like an architect or like, I'm not sure if he's an architect or interior designer, but okay. he talks about like different, um, <laughs> about like different styles that people have in their house. Right, okay. like there's people that are modernist, minimalist. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Got there's it. Got people, it. you know, that love a lot of color whatever, okay. and all that. And he was saying how like. Um, este, people that like have a, a house or a loft that's like industrial, the moment that you get there, it won't be two minutes and they tell you, oh, look at my exposed brick wall. <laughs> God, that's so true. That's so true. <laughs> Just like people tell you about uh, uh, CrossFit. About CrossFit. And, and, uh, uh, Herbalife. Uh, Herbal uh, yeah, Herbalife. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, that is so true. I can think of so many times that's happened to me. Oh, look at my really nice loft. Yeah, like look at how nice it is, all the light. And exposed look at the, ex brick. the exposed brick. <laughs> and in that same video, he was saying how like... When it's that, what is a country chic style? That, that, that shabby it's chic. Called. Shabby chic. It's yeah. always like, oh, live, laugh, li love, oh, live, live laugh, laugh, live, laugh, love. <laughs> live, laugh, love. You will find it in the kitchen, oh you know, in the bathroom. <laughs> Lord. That is home goods staple right there. <laughs> I, I, I don't know how it doesn't exist because I've always thought about like that aesthetic, mm -hmm. that country house aesthetic that they sell in like. Home Goods and Hobby Lobby and all these uh, places, how like there hasn't been like a joke one, right? Like the live, laugh, love. Usually it's like in a very like scripted text or whatever. Like how, hate, yell, die. Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. And like it's so funny. We're gonna make a t-shirt. I of that. can totally see you like somebody putting that on the wall, and like at first you won't even notice it because that's to be the same script, right? Has the, to same be the same font, script, the yeah, same yeah, color, yeah, yeah. that yeah. country house, that very like, light pastel rustic, you yes, know, yes. look. Yeah. But yeah, something like that, or like fuck off. <laughs> I would put that in the bathroom. <laughs> You know? And like in the laundry room, in the laundry room, put petit puteria. Oh no, <laughs> not in the laundry room. There's so much fabric softener. I, I'll never forget that I went to somebody's house who had a chandelier in the laundry room, and I was like, I think that's a little much. Like, Whose house was this? Sia? I will not say. <laughs> they had a chandelier, like a. Well, I wouldn't say it was a full chandelier, like a you know. There's, I like don't a care chandelier, but it was a, and it wasn't even like the I IKEA had the chandelier forever that was like twenty bucks. Yeah, so yeah, it was like a yeah. fake chandelier. No, this was like a chandelier in the laundry room. I mean, it looked like something out of a movie, but you know. But it's a washing. It's a laundry room. <laughs> How fancy do you gotta be to get Mira, your whites white? Listen, I I have to go totally 
like alpha male on this. Okay. Yeah. If I had my way and we didn't have all the ping pong boil stuff in the garage, I would I dream about one of those like, like man caves. Oh my god, yes. Like I would put that Oh, uh, like your neighbor across the street? Yeah. Have you seen his garage? Yeah. Uh, yeah. He has a TV and like yeah. ambient lighting and that it's shit. really fucking cool. You know, with like, all his power tools. Like when I'm shit. there loading up the car with ping pong boil and he's got his garage door open, I'm like Oh. I look at him and I'm like, that's what I want. I'm never going to have it, but that's what I want. Well, never say never. Never say never. Like, I've told you, I want all these power tools. I mean, I have power tools now, but I want, like, I have a miter saw. Like, right. You know, but you want, like, more. I want a table saw. I want it all Milwaukee brand. Like, you, you I go full Tim the Toolman Taylor. I, I do. I, yeah, I do in my yeah. garage. I mean, I have a one car garage, so I'm going to have to do the best that I can. But freaking Bean Bomb Boyo takes all my space. Oh, that <laughs> damn chicken. <laughs> you know what was Fucking so, commercial you fryer. Know what was so, like, I'm not in my 20s anymore. <laughs> oh, God. I'm like, okay, I'm in my 40s. When I was so excited over the fact that I got a refrigerator in the garage. <laughs> you, were, you were pretty excited. Too. I was excited. <laughs> like, I was very excited. I told you, I'm like, this is how we know we're in middle age. I remember going into bed and being like, why am I so excited about the damn refrigerator? <laughs> but, see, I, I think I looked at it like 12 times the, the, that <laughs> Me day. Too. I, I, I just kept going. going and there was nothing in it at that point. <laughs> Look at my stainless steel girl. <laughs> it was like, oh, it's so cool. It's giving off so much free on. There's a fridge in the garage. It's like, really? I've reached that point in my life. Yeah. Listeners. <laughs> Yes, we have. <laughs> Listeners, how did you get happy when you had a fridge in your garage? Or in the backyard. Is that, that your backyard. is that your new goal? Like are you at that age where you're like, God, one day, one day I'll have a garage I fridge. Eh? I mean, you know, I don't remember that being a thing growing up, but I feel like now everybody has it. Yeah, oh freeze. No, it was freezers. The freezers, People the freezers. Freeze. The freezer. My grandparents had the freezer para pa los pescados que te cuando iban a pescar en los cayo. And some of those freezers, you could put like a family of four in them. Like, <laughs> uh, I'm sure some of those freezers were like Jeffrey Dahmer approved. Like, it's like, what were you putting in the freezer? Yeah, it was pretty intense. So, pretty intense. Anyway, so you have something else? Because I have, a, I have a, a little bit of a deeper topic. I have, I have something else, but we're going to keep on the lively tone. Yeah, we do. I think we we, we want to keep it a little lively, ish. You know, like Blake. Oh, you know, Blake Lively. Oh, Blake Lively for a minute. I th- oh, well, Blake Lively. Yes, I love Blake that's Lively. why I was like, what do you mean? For Ugh. a minute, I thought, uh, what's his name? Shelton. Blake Shelton. Ugh. Blake Shelton. Oy. Yes. Bomido. You're not a fan. But not anyway. A fan. I'm a fan of Gwen Stefani. This is true. Gwen Stefani and No Doubt are going to be in Coachella. Are they? Yeah. Okay, so are they also going to be part of that mega concert okay, that so everyone's at? That mega, well, you know who's going to be part of that mega concert? Us? Craig David. I don't know, like, are we going to be part Craig of it? Because that shit. mega concert, what is it? The Friends and Lovers? I don't know. It's, it's everyone who ever had a single in the two thousands. I mean, and, and <laughs> Friends and Lovers in Las Vegas. When you first sent me that ad, I thought it was fake. It had to be fake. Right? I was like, this is fake. Remember, like a year ago, there was like a Coachella. Play, oh like yeah, an ad, like, like a parody. Yeah, yeah. Play, play this. I'm like, oh, this is that. It's like freaking. Everybody is on there. Look, there's two Nellies. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Nelly and Nelly Furtado. Yes. Mary J. Blige was going to be there, but I think she she's the only no, person. Okay, there's too many people. Like, you're, you're, like you're, uh, where do you go? Like, I, I Honestly, I'm a little overwhelmed just looking at the, at the flyer. Where do you go? Where do you go? Where do you go? Maybe they're there too. No Mercy. Where yeah. do you go? You know what? I'm sure No Mercy's My probably lovely. playing on a stage okay, there too. listeners, listeners, come on, come on. Ba-da-dum, that song was a jam. If you tell me you didn't like Where Did You Go by No Mercy in the late 90s, like we can't be friends. No. That song was a jam, especially if you're from Miami. Yeah, because they were the Latin uh, boy band. I That song... I, you know what? A no shame. I freaking loved that song. I had that album by No Mercy. <laughs> like, I don't care. I liked that other song. Um, um, uh, kiss You All Over. Uh, no, Make Me Wanna Walk. Oh, uh, 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 Baby, don't make me. How does it go? Don't make me live. It's been a while since you've heard it, huh? You. I'll never make it. Don't. Don't make me live without you. And the other one, please don't go. Please don't please go. Please I don't forgot about that go. one. Don't go. You're the only angel yes. I know. Angel so, so I listeners, know. if any of you know No Mercy, we'll have them on the show. Well, are they from Miami? I think so. That's why I'm saying. If any of you know No Mercy, we've already put the call out for Met and Booty Girls. So I figured let's just put out the call for No Mercy Thumbian. Oh my God. Can you imagine if we got Met and Booty Girls and... And no okay, mercy so, at the same time. So we gotta talk about that. Yes, for a little you know bit. what? Like, so yeah, let's just. I don't know. Back to I this. don't know who it was. I don't know who it was. Somehow somebody posted something. Oh, Jeff, about, Jeffrey mixed. He posted something yeah. about Men and Booty Girls from the nineties, and 
he found some footage, and this guy obviously had no clue who the men and booty girls were. Which is funny because he's actually a big on he's big on freestyle. So like he understands. No, no, I'm saying, but he understands like that. But but he world. obviously didn't know anything about who the men and booty girls is because yeah. how I read the original post was like. Look at this video from 1996 right. of these men and booty girls doing men Ring My Bell. Yeah, yeah. And when you sent me that, I was like, bro, that's the men and booty girls. <laughs> like 1996 Miami, like what are you talking about? And it's so funny how in the comments, this was on Instagram, people that were from Miami were like, yeah, that's like, the yeah. men and booty girls. And it's so funny because to people outside of Miami, especially if like, you know, these white, you know, white people from out of Miami who look at that, they're like, what the hell is this? Is this like a mad TV parody? And I'm like, no, dude, it's the men and booty girls. <laughs> this was you know, real. with their disco medley, yes. you can ring my bell. <laughs> like, yes. So it was great. I mean, if what it's one of those that if you know, you know, and if you remember the men and booty girls, like uh, listeners, do you remember the men and booty girls? If you Come remember on. them, your life is a little better. And then of course, you know, back to no mercy. I mean, no mercy in like 1996, 1997. Where do you go was a jam. It was I will I will die on that hill. That song was a jam. That song was everywhere. It was it was quintessential like Miami sort of like 90s freestyle infused pop. It was an like evolved freestyle. And it was great. And what I love is that the that song Where do you go? The 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 beat and like the sample is the same one from Everything But the Girl. And I miss you. Yes, it is. Like the desert miss the yeah, rain. It's, 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 missing. it's yeah. the same sample. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. But just used very differently. <laughs> used very differently. Yeah. Like one is an upbeat song and the other one is a song about being, you know, alone in depression. But nonetheless, we can make that work. But yeah, Mid and Booty Girls yeah, and No Mercy. And no Mercy. Yes. Music works for everyone. Listen, I will go to that concert. I would. I think they're going to be at that Vegas thing. <laughs> um. <laughs> they could fill up the Miami-Dade County Auditorium. I'm just saying. I'm putting it out there. Listen, they can play the fair. TLC played the Miami. Uh, this is what I'm saying. TLC played the fair here. Played the fair, yeah. Fair so I'm sure it could do. But so I, I saw, I came across this the other day on on Instagram, and I, I just thought it was interesting, mostly because I think it ties back to something we we keep talking about with social media, but also because you and I, I don't think we'll ever experience this. So apparently, Americans are experiencing a quote unquote friendship recession as a massive drop in close friends has been reported. <laughs> so. <laughs> so I don't know what that is. So a survey <laughs> highlighted America's quote unquote friendship recession, revealing a significant decline in the number of close friends reported by Americans, especially among men. However, this trend isn't just an individual concern, but a societal one. Friendship correlates with community engagement and civic participation, with those having more close friends being more likely to attend local events, community meetings, and engage in various social activities. Additionally, individuals with larger friend groups are more inclined to talk to strangers and volunteer in their communities, highlighting the broader impact of friendship on social interactions and community involvement. I found this interesting because it doesn't mention it there, but I do wonder how social media might tie into this. And I say that because I think there's always been people who have been like, oh my God, I have so many friends, so many friends, so many friends. And, you know, we're very lucky to have had the same group of friends for, you know, eons now. I think we're, our friendships are about, Decades. they're almost as old as Cher. And, we, you know, we're very tight and we're very close. But I I do know people out there who are just like, oh yeah, they're, they're my really close friend. They're my really close friend, my really close friend. And it's like, you kind of start talking to them and it's like, You've known each other for 10 minutes. And I think social media also makes you feel like you know people because you chat on these on these platforms, but you don't know them. Mm -hmm. And I wonder if if what we're seeing now is this this kind of pendulum swing from this initial, you know, mass connecting with everybody that actually may have even been incurred through COVID because everybody was mm -hmm. stuck at home. And now we're seeing just the, the the reverse of that. Well, I think that because of social media, the definition of what is a close friend has changed. Right. Because if you talk to somebody every day and you tell them like very personal things and deep things, um, you've never met them, but and you've never met them in person, but they could be a very close friend. Right. Because, you know, I, I find that a lot of times when like, for example, us, mm -hmm. like we're very, very connected. It's nine of us and we're very, very connected. It's like, it's a village. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it, it really is. Um, and I mean, we, we're like even closer than family because I'm closer yeah. to all of you than I am to people that I'm blood related yeah, to. Yeah. 
right? Um, but I, I don't think we, I think we're the exception to the rule. Okay. Um, because many, many times throughout many years when I bump into people, like people that we, I went to, we went to high school together mm -hmm. with. Yeah. And especially now in social media, they see that we're all still right. friends. They're like, oh my God, I can't believe you're still friends with so-and-so and so-and-so and you all guys hang out. I'm like, yeah, we hang out. Like, you know, <laughs> some of us have had kids. Like, right. you know, like we're a big part of each other's lives, kids. Like, like it's like that, you know? And, you know, when you hear people, they're like, oh, maybe they're friends with one or two people they went to high school right. with. And, and, and with us especially, there's like layers of people because obviously we're in the top layer, but then there's other people that we're maybe not as close to that aren't in our small circle. Well, of nine people, right. but we're not. <laughs> well, nine is small. Right. But we're not in that are not in that circle, but on like level two. Right. Right. That I still feel closest. I feel closest to them. Yeah. I see them maybe a few times a year. Right. But that closeness is still there. Right. right. Um, but I, th but, but I think to back to what you were saying is that, I think today with me with social media and all that, it's very easy to find relationships with people or communicate with people that are outside of your circle that maybe you feel very comfortable talking to, right? Mm -hmm. Because they're outside of your circle and they don't know everything about you right. and and you know or, or you could tell them things that maybe you don't tell people that are closer to you. You mm -hmm. know, it, I, I think that because of social media, the definition of what a close friend could be is different because I think that there's maybe people that you're close to that, you know, you have my back. If I need you, you'll right. always be there. If I need for you to help me move a mattress, you'll help me move the mattress, you know? That, he's and, not making that up, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> um, that actually happened. And, um, you know, there, there's people that, yes, they're there for you and they have your back. But maybe it's not people you open up to. Right. Right? Maybe hey. there's other people that you tell, like, really intimate things to. Um because again, now because of technology, you can do that, and mm -hmm. and that's why I feel that that what you were talking about right. is very relevant nowadays. Yeah, because there's people. I mean, there's people that freaking like date and get married <laughs> online. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And 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 what's not to say? Obviously, the physical aspect and component isn't there, but in terms of like the connection with that person, what's what is there to say there? You don't have a connection right. with that person. You know. Um, because, I mean, look, the, the human relationships are very complex, right? Because you're, you could hang around with somebody all day. You could be intimate with them and not have a connection with them. Right. Right? And then vice versa. There's people you could have a connection with and they're, you know, either there's no intimacy or there's no physicality to right. it. So, yeah, I, I just, and I also think that this is not so much relevant to us, but because we're older but um, we're younger, but older. <laughs> um, but like kids now that are like 18, 19 years old that have grown up in this digital world. Yeah. Right. Oh, there's people who That's have entire all that they know. relationships that have lived and died online. Right. Yeah. Because I often wonder like, and this is something I, I genuinely don't know, like kids that are in high school now, are their relationships the same? You know, because- in what sense? Maybe they don't mingle as much in school because they do on social media or in texting or on WhatsApp. Okay. Right? So you can be one of my best friends and one of the people that I'm closest to. We go to the same school, but maybe we don't see each other that much in actual physical school. But you're always, but we're always, we're always connected. We're right? always connected. Right. Right. Whereas before, like... I'm Actually, I think that I'm a, a, we're a really good example. I remember... I remember in 10th grade, I was like the one person who had first lunch. Oh, <laughs> you remember that? I do. That I, was like, I don't know who you pissed off that the year. The entire group had second lunch except me. I think me and one other friend. Yeah. And like, I felt such a distance. <laughs> you knew nothing about what was I happening. I felt such a distance. Like, I remember the few times that for whatever reason I ended up in lunch with you guys in second lunch. It was so awkward. You had to catch up. Right. Because yeah. like, you know. We didn't have phones. And yet, we had classes together. We didn't have phones, but classes don't right. count much because you're in class. Right, 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 right. What was your social setting in school? Your social setting was um, was lunch. Lunch, maybe right? PE, if right. you had it together, because yeah. you could talk there. It's funny, because I remember there was... You and I, obviously, together in senior year, we had several classes yeah. together. We had journalism together, and we had English together. But like I remember in ninth and 10th grade, you and I didn't have any classes together. No, at all. At all. At all. 
Um, Going, you're right. Yeah, there. <laughs> I, actually, there is a lot of in our, people in our friend group that I didn't have any classes with. I yeah. mean, somehow we made it through. We made it. Yeah, but, <laughs> we're here. But, but what I'm saying is that, like in in today in like today's world. I may have maybe not had any classes with you or nothing but like we would that. have been texting all day. But we would have been texting all day and we would have right. WhatsApp, we would have FaceTime, you know, right. whatever. So yeah. you know, it's just it's different. It's different. You know, like kids today will never know the struggle that you and I used to go to go through when I would call your house and you and your sister would fight <laughs> for the phone. Like I'm not kidding, <laughs> listeners. Like <laughs> Literally, they would <laughs> fight. Tata, why are you on the phone so much? I want to call my like, and I'd be, I, I'd, I'd stay there in the line, and them two would have it out, out, and then a parent will get involved. Yes, because that's what happens when you're about two years apart. And then you know your dad would get the phone, Darren. He won't, he can't talk on the phone. Boom, and hang up. <laughs> there was only one line, kids. Some and of you, you will and, never you know. You know what's funny? That of all of my friends. That only happened with you. <laughs> okay, because nobody else had siblings. Not really. Well, my I did, but they weren't uh, my but, brother. Okay, but your brother's older. My brother was already like, I don't know, <laughs> flying around the world. Yeah, your brother was <laughs> older. And then like most of our other friends. And then our other friend, her brothers are, are like, like her parents. Age. Right. <laughs> so, and then everybody. Others were single. Ch- so, single right. Single right only children. So like, yeah. Yeah. That's why I was the only one because by default. <laughs> but it was tremenda oh, yeah. <laughs> You and your sister. <laughs> oh, yes. We, we've gotten over it now. Yes. We've, we, we're, 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 we've settled That's why it. kids today will never know the struggle. They won't. <laughs> they won't. They won't. And they I should. always found it was so interesting that your house had one line and your dad worked for the phone company. <laughs> And it's not even that like they had a second line and they didn't give you guys individual lines. Right. No, no, no. No, there, no, was, there, no, was, there no. was one line. There was one line. Do your parents still have the same phone number? They do. So do mine. Yeah. My parents have had the same phone number since they came back from Cuba. Okay. I've told you this before. You cannot get rid of that number. Oh, no, no, no. I won't. My the, my parents. No no, 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 no. For selfish reasons, I've told you. Oh, yeah. Because it's yeah. the only phone number you it's know. It's the only other phone number I know aside from my parents. So if I ever wind up in jail <laughs> and my parents don't pick up, I'm calling your parents. About. <laughs> about. So my parents always had the same phone number since they got here from Cuba. So they've had it for four, over 40 years. Some years ago, my dad did some cluster F with Comcast. I don't know what it was. Se me do, me dio un tremendo. I don't even know what he did. That we lost the phone number. <laughs> No, no, and no, I remember, no, 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 I remember no, no, calling no. my parents' house, and they wouldn't pick. Um, the the number was disconnected. I'm like, "What do you mean it's disconnected?" Like, I went to their house, right? right, and they had lost the phone number, and I was like, I, 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 "Like, I told my dad, I'm like, <laughs> you're like, what? what do you mean you lost the phone number? Sí, porque me hicieron un plan que no sé qué, y me dieron yeah. un número de lo because I think he was switching like from like from Bell South or whatever to like oh, Comcast, okay. Okay. right? And I think the Comcast person was probably just like, oh, let's just get you a new phone. Right, right, right. right, right this right, was right. like 10 years ago. And I was like, oh, no, 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 no. We're not doing that, Robert. We are not getting a new number. <laughs> Mind you, I haven't lived there in years. I'm like, Doesn't we're matter. not getting a new number. And I moved heaven and earth. And I remember calling Comcast and be like, you don't understand, you know, Bob on the other line. I'm like, we need this number back. <laughs> like, we need this number now. <laughs> You call the president of Comcast. I don't know who the fuck you need to talk to, but I need well, that number. Well, we got the number we back. We got the number back. We got it back. So then, then, Good. Now I can go to jail. Yeah. So then we got the number back. The number was saved. And then um, last year, you know, when my grandmother passed away, mm-hmm. um, be, because the phone number ended up being on her, num- on her name. I don't know why. Right. Um, when she passed away, I was like, okay. So I ported the number to my T-Mobile account. So that my parents' number... <laughs> Is mine. Oh, perfect. Yeah, so now you'll that, get the call. It's on a cell phone, but I gave the cell phone to my mom. Uh-huh. I'm staying in jail forever. <laughs> <laughs> no, but if my mom hears you call, she'll be like, Daddy, you might tell you, Amanda. I don't trust your mom to pick up the phone. Right. Not 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 answer. Pick up. <laughs> oh no no no. My mom picking up the phone. I que lo tengo guardado like That's a why. Tera. Like I, 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 like a, I don't tengo like a tera. I'll be arrested, tried and executed but before she gets the number. The okay, the okay, okay, okay. Um so I'm like the number is mine. <laughs> Like we're never getting rid of that number. I will be ninety years old, and that will still be my number. Bury you with that number. I'm not getting rid of that. No, it's my number. That's what I'm saying. Bury you with that number. And the same with your parents' yes. number. Yes, yes. You and your sister can keep the number. We will keep the number there as long as we can. Yes. <laughs> it's your freaking phone number, like childhood phone number. Like I know. Like I'm not getting rid of that number. 
<laughs> Listen, the world changes a lot. You got to keep some certain things stable. Yeah, certain things you got to keep next to your heart. Yeah, certain yes, things yes, yes. Keep, yes. So. All right. Anyway. So I know you want you wanted to shift to something a little heavier. So uh, a, actually, a little, I did a little heavier. <clears throat> so <clears throat> this week, um, <clears throat> heavy, heavy fun topics. Heavy fun topics. So this week. Um, a Florida bill was introduced, or it's about to be introduced, where it will make it a requirement in public schools to teach about communism. Oh. It will be part of the oh, curriculum. I think I heard something about To this. be part of, the, be of communism. And it's one of those things that, like, you know, when you first hear it on its face, you're like, well, that's not a bad idea. It should be right? part of civics or, or and, something. And um, the person, I'm not sure if he's introduced the bill. But he um, he certainly was one of the people who is uh, for the bill. He said, in terms of co- of um, of the of communism being added to the curriculum, okay. and teaching of communism, he said, it simply aims to provide a comprehensive understanding of communism's impact, not as an indoctrination or fear mongering. Brennan said the the name who did it was a uh, Chuck uh, Brennan. Okay. But as means of acknowledging its role in victimizing, torturing, murdering, and displacing millions of people in the past century, in terms of communism. So when you when you read it like that, I, I think we can all agree that kids nowadays teaching them about the horrors of communism is a good thing because as we talked many times we, on the show, <laughs> kids, you know. G- Kids need to be informed of everything around them. Mm-hmm. Um, and in a world today where with social media and there's so much content around you, um, you could very easily fall prey to misinformation online as to what communism is. So I'm not necessarily opposed to kids being taught about the horrors of communism. Mm-hmm. This is my concern. And I was going to say, where's the this asterisk? Is, this is my concern, and this is sort of where my question and topic of discussion is. Okay. My concern is that, unfortunately, school curri- curriculums have been politicized, specifically here in Florida. Right. So my concern is that this will become a politicized issue um, because, unfortunately, there's certain people um, on a certain spectrum of the government that call other people on the other side communists. And the thing is that the word communist nowadays is thrown around um, like a hot potato. And people call other people communists who are not communist. Um, they call other people socialists who are not socialist um, mm-hmm. for political gain and for fear mongering. So my concern is that while I agree that kids should be taught about the horrors of communism, my concern is that it becomes a political um, juggernaut in terms of how it's taught in schools. Mm-hmm. So unless they could teach about it in a very um, sort of scholastic, scholastic, objective way, say, hey, this is what communism is. This is what countries that have had communism have had to deal with. Mm-hmm. Um, and this is the truth about communism without making any judgments and without accusing people within our own country and people with certain political ideologists, right. uh, ideologies of being a communist, being a communist. Um, that is where my concern is. What, what, how will they enforce this? How will they teach this? Despite the fact that the term communism, especially here in Florida, most specifically in South Florida, it's used as an attack on other people who are not communist and who are not socialist. Um, and it's just used for political gain. And that is my fear of it, um, mm-hmm. that it's something that's going to be misused. And I will say this, as a student of public schools here in Florida and specifically Dade County. I went to public school from kindergarten all the way to senior year. We did learn about communism. We did learn about socialism. There was no indoctrination. There was no nothing. We learned about it like you learn about anything else in history. So it is something that has already been been part of the curriculum. And again, my concern as to why 
this could be used for political gain from some people is that there's so been so many attacks on Florida's curriculum on schools. Like we can't teach this. We can't teach that. Mm -hmm. We have to ban certain books. We have to, you know, this is not the place. Schools are not the place to discuss certain subjects, but now you want to introduce the communism into the curriculum. So I, I, I'm very skeptical about it. Again, I think kids should learn the horrors of communism, but unfortunately I don't trust lawmakers in Florida, at least right now, to be introducing any bill as to what should be added or put on our school's curriculum. So what do you think about this? So I think I think I, my first thought whenever something like this comes up is obviously like, hmm, why now? Right. It's always it's always that that initial thought of to your point, you know, it is something that is taught. It is it is part of the curriculum. I mean, obviously, there's not like a communism section of, you know, of the school year, but it is part of, of history and it, and it is presented. I don't I don't even want to say taught. It's presented. Um, I'm always wondering what's the goal. Right. And I think that kind of feeds into to a little bit of what you're saying, which is, you know, why now? What's the goal here? What's the reason? And I think that we have learned from from past ex, past recent examples, specifically here in, in Florida, where you know we dress something up in something that we can all quote unquote get behind, and it is not clear, and then it goes pear shaped. You know, I think actually I was I, something I wanted to bring up, and I'll just kind of I'll, I'll, I'll weave it in. Um, pear shaped, mm. you know, que rico una pera. Una pera bien, bien fría, bien fría, así with a little bit of syrup. Um, so a ti tú te jugo de pera? It's thick, isn't it? Yeah, because it's pe it's pear nectar. Yeah, it's it's a little much. <laughs> <laughs> I remember as it's a, a kid, little much as a kid in that, in that little, in, in the me, little tin. My mom would give me the Libby's yes, uh, yes, yes, yeah. and I'm like, este es potaje, este es poo. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's too viscous. <laughs> I love how we're talking about this serious <laughs> subject and we're talking about <laughs> pear juice. Jugo de pera. I mean, de pera. Pero que rico, um, de pera. when you put the ice, since it's so thick, you have to let it melt. You, yes, but yes. The, the, the thing about when you put ice in really thick juice, like jugo de pera. It doesn't all no cool up evenly. No, so you'll take a sip and it'll be warm. But then when you get to the part of the juice it's that's so near the cold. ice, it's cold. Yeah, so it's like mm, warm, lukewarm, cold. Yeah, it, it it's like a Goldilocks story just in a glass. <laughs> it's one in one sip. In one sip. <laughs> in one sip. It's the whole damn story of Goldilocks. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. So sorry. So what I was saying is um. You know, but what happens when you have these types of things get passed that are very, you know, this is the goal and, and we don't really, but then we don't have the details behind it, right? I don't know if you saw this recently that um, now during Black History Month, you know, there's there's obviously there's presentations in public schools about black history. And there's like, you know, permission slips going home now where it's just like a black person's coming to speak. Are you okay with this? Right. I mean, I'm oversimplifying, but that's the gist of it. And, you know, we now have the governor, you know, DeSantis um saying that you know he's calling on state lawmakers to take action against bad actors that are misinterpreting state laws for political gain so it's like you know if people are abusing this process to try and muddy those waters then we have to have some reforms um the santa said at a press conference on thursday in which he blamed activists who challenged too many books and school leaders who he claimed are quote unquote intentionally withholding books um, uh, DeSantis said he is directing the Florida Department of Education to craft rules that will hold educators accountable if they go beyond what state law requires them to do. He also signaled support for a legislative proposal that would find residents who file frivolous complaints. But the problem is that, you know, you create this problem yourself and now you're saying, well, I don't understand what's going on here. Because as you yourself have said, if something is written vaguely, then what happens? You have this entire spectrum of people who don't know what to do, and they're overcorrecting themselves. Right. So he, the problem with all these laws that have been passed, whether it's the laws uh, pertaining to books, um, the, because the thing with the with the books is that there isn't there isn't a list of books. Correct. There is isn't Correct. a list of books. And if you see online a list of books that have been banned in Florida. It, it's, it's a it, historical it's, it's, document. It's incorrect. It's not, yeah. There is not an actual list. What happens is that the the laws and guidelines are very vague. Right. And then what happens is that within the law, I believe it's a, it's a felony. It's a felony. It's a felony. That's why these librarians that, are freaking out. That li the librarian is the one 
it, 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 responsible for right. this. It is a felony if they break this law. So what happened? A lot of libra- librarians and school administrators in the era of caution like, have Fuck that. taken out books that may be deemed controversial and that may be fall within the scope of this badly written law as a as protection. I would do the same. I've actually spoken, and I, we spoke about this here on the yeah, show yeah. Uh, last year, I believe. Um, I've actually spoken to several school administrators that I know personally. These aren't people that are political. These aren't people that like are on one side or another. These are school administrators. One of them being an assistant principal, and I have, and I it at length spoke to her, and she told me, "Yeah, we're taking all these books out of the media center because guess what? If we don't, then either myself or the administrators yeah. or the librarian could be at could be." You're opening yourself up. They could be liable as a felony. And the problem is that if a parent challenges a book, the burden is on the school or on the librarian to show that the book is appropriate, not the other way around, not the burden on the parent to show why that book is inappropriate, right? Because if you're the one bringing the complaint and you're the one saying, you got to tell me why you should be the one in law. That's how it is. You are the one who you have the burden to show, Hey, this book shouldn't be in the, in the library or shouldn't be in the curriculum for reasons, A, B, C, and D. And this is in violation of this law, right? In, In this, it's the other way around. It's the librarian who has to show that. So, in, in, in self-protection and preservation, right. they have removed books. Why? Because all these laws, whether it's this law or the Parental Acts, uh, Act law, um, which is what we call the Don't Say Gay Bill, all these laws were vaguely written on purpose. The governor of this state is a Yale-educated ed- attorney. He's a really smart guy. You know it's Law School 101. I was there. <laughs> law school 101. Vaguely written laws are bad law because then they're up to the interpretation of whether it's a school board, a, a commissioner, a, a local chapter, or ultimately the courts for the interpretation. So when you have different people saying what may or may not be the law, then that causes chaos and confusion. Confusion, And that's what's happening here. So since you brought him up, you know, he's saying, well, you know, people are uh, overreacting, overreacting or, and this and that. Yeah, people are overreacting because they're scared of shit. They don't know how to, uh, right. they don't know how to move forward. And the person who put this into play was, was you. you. Right. You don't so, get, you don't get to light a building on fire and then get credit when you call the fire department. Yeah. Um, but, but to bring it back to this, you know, and that's, that's kind of where my mind was going when, when you were saying this, because, you know, you've got this, this thing, which on the face of it should just be like teaching the quote unquote, you know, what communism is in the horrors of communism, right? Fair enough. But now, okay, what if you are raised in a family of communists, right? I mean, God knows we are not pro-communists on this on this uh, program. Do they get to go in and now counter that teaching because it goes against their views and it shouldn't be taught? Like mm-hmm. this is what I'm saying when you when you start putting all these things in, into motion and you you know you can't sit there and say I want to give the power to the parents, but only when I want you to have the power. Mm-hmm. Right. right, you can't, you can't, right. you either, either, but, you can't talk out of both sides of your mouth. Right. First of all, it's very difficult. <laughs> um, but I, you know, and again, if if this is going to be a straight down the middle, like you know, educational purpose, yes, I'm all for it. But again, that already exists. I, I have to believe that that's part of just teaching history. It does, it does. But unfortunately, now, the, you know, school curriculums have become politicized. And, this is smoke and, and mirrors to me. I don't know. I don't you know. know, I just find it really interesting that there's so many people that are giving opinions about school curriculums. And number one, we're never students in public Dade school. County public schools or any public school in Florida, number one. And number two, don't have kids in public school. Mm-hmm. And I could tell you that as a person, again, a full product of public schools in Florida and having a child already who's been five years in the public school system. And I'm very, very involved in my kid's school. I know everything in, that happens and doesn't happen there, right? So I can tell you from a firsthand experience well, what these kids are teaching, what teachers are teaching, what kids are doing, what's in the classroom, what's not in the classroom. And when I hear all these people like, oh, kids are being indoctrinated, indoctrinated with what? Because like all this indoctrination that you're talking about, I've never seen that in my kid's class or school that's not to say that there's maybe individual 
Um, right, bad actors. Uh, not even bad actors. Quote, but, unquote, well, but, but, but quote unquote, but bad there actors aren't isolated cases of certain teachers saying certain that have and... said certain things or have taught certain things that are not that that are not within the curriculum or things that maybe you don't want your kid mm-hmm. learning in school. That's not to say there haven't been isolated incidents, right. but as a whole and as a general consensus, that's not the case. At all whatsoever. So then what happens? They take a case over here, a case over here, a case over here. Again, going back to one of the things we first talked about, the cutting and pasting, to build a narrative. So then they build a narrative. They talk about it. They put it on social media. They come out there all, you know, upset and, like, enraged. Like, oh, right, are right. being taught about sex and sexual orientation, you know, in kindergarten? I'm like... I don't want my kid being talked about. I don't want my kid. Nobody talking about my kid about sexual orientation in kindergarten kindergarten or second or third or fourth grade. That's my kid. Right. 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 But I'm also not going to green light this bill that now a a teacher may or may not include, can include a picture of their spouse. If they're a same sex spouse on the desk of their, you know, right. Of of their wedding picture on their desk. Like, right. You know, and this is where we are. So I just, you know, as I said when we were talking about this in terms of the um, the, the no the the bill regarding oh, communism, communism. Yes, yes, yes. it's one of those things that on paper sounds good and right. on paper I'm not opposed to it. I yeah, kids need to learn the horror. But of how communism, is it going to be executed? Right. But the problem is that I don't at uh, currently I don't trust any law when this, these type of bills come out. I don't trust any lawmaker in Florida in so far that they're have an motive. a bill. In good faith. To me, all these bills are being passed for political gain. They're being passed for for fear-mongering, not of communism, but fear-mongering of the opposition. Of the other. Of your opponent, of the opponent party. And, you know, I'm trying to discuss this in a very, 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 if you've noticed, well, yeah, but that's impartial what I'm saying. way. Uh, 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 but other, we, but we all know who are the people that call everybody who doesn't agree with them a communist. Because God knows that I have been called a communist a thousand times because of my political views. And there is not a micro hair in my body that's communist. Nothing. Like nothing. Because I know the law and because I know politics, I am more sure than ever that, you know, and obviously my personal experience being Cuba, that I am 100% against communism, 100, no, 1,000%. And yet I got a communist, I'm called a communist all the time because, you know, I'm a liberal. It's like, you know, whatever. It's, so so that's the part that it's like, eh, right. Eh, on its face, it doesn't look like a bad idea, but I don't trust anyone. It's, so. it's the execution. <laughs> Ultimately, yeah. it's yeah. the execution. I don't trust anyone. Hey everyone, it's DJ Ioye. You know we've been digging on Gawi Lemon Lime Soda for a bit now. The tart, sweet, bubbly taste of Gawi Lemon Lime is perfect for thirst quenching, and it's been a hit at all of our Bean Bomb Boyo pop-ups. People love it. Not to mention, it's been a crisp, refreshing soda since 1948 without an aftertaste like some other sodas. Just saying. Así que, get your Gawi Lemon Lime at your store or even online. And if your store doesn't carry it, pues pídelo and start enjoying the authentically Cuban taste of Gawi Lemon Lime today. Gawi Lemon Lime, que rico es. Anyway, oh yeah, all this has made me really thirsty. This is Well, you know, we're, we're very thirsty and, and it's a good thing that we're very thirsty today because, uh, you know, who's back sponsoring our last soda? Ging. Kawi. Kawi ah, Lemon Lime. Kawi Lemon Lime. Kawi Lemon Lime. I'm is refreshed back. just saying it. I mean, listen, you know we love ourselves some Kawi. So <laughs> it is time for our last Kawi of the desert. Our first last Kawi of the desert for 2024. Yes. 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 Let the refreshment begin. Limon con lima, lima, limon. Lo trae Kawi, que vacilo. En la respuesta, mate calor. Tomate un Kawi, lima, limon. All right, so do you want to go first? Do you want me to go first? I'll go first. All right. So, you know, I was thinking who to give my last soda of the desert to. Sometimes, you know, I know right away. Other times I have to be like, okay, I have to look through stuff that happened in the week. And I am actually going to give my last soda to Jennifer Lopez. Okay, I'm not going to be mad at that. You know, Jennifer Lopez has an empire, so... 
you know, she she could get her own last soda if she, she wanted can get to. A, she can get a couple but cowies. We're, but we're going to give her a cowie. We're going to give yeah. her a cowie. She get a whole know? case. I, I, Jennifer Lopez. I mean, Jennifer Lopez is Puerto Rican, Cuban adjacent. That's true. Qu- Jennifer Lopez will like cowie. That's true. Right. You know. That's true. Remember, you know, Cuba and Puerto Rico very similar. Yes. You know, Bacardi's Cuban, two, two but then went to Puerto bird. Rico. Mm-hmm. You know, there's there's a lot there's of connection. There's connection. And I mean, again, we're Caribbean folk. We like lemon lime. This is true. <laughs> anyway, pero bueno. You know, so Jennifer Lopez this week came out with her new album called This Is Me Now. Now. And for those of you who haven't noticed or don't haven't seen, so she's releasing the album and she released just today a I can't, I don't know if it's a mo- it's not a video it's album. It's a visual interpretation. No acaba de ser una película either. <laughs> it's somewhere in between a visual album and a movie. It's somewhere in the middle. Right, I, I, that's a fair assessment. Right, yeah, yeah. So it's not like a visual album, like Beyonce does a lot of visual albums, but it's not a movie like it, a feature length film. Because, either. but it does have a narrative. Yes, right, it's yes. all her songs. There's visuals to all her songs, and there's a running narrative of it. And I thought it was so well done, yeah. and it was really, really good. And you know what? There's people talk so much crap about Jennifer Lopez. You know, she can't sing, she can't act, she can't do this, she can't do that. You know what? Yes, she can because she's in, been in her career. Like, yeah. Jennifer Lopez has been acting for over 30 years. Yeah. Her music career is over 25 years old. We're still talking about her. She headlined the Super Bowl four years ago. Her albums still sell. Um, her movies, people still go watch her movies. Um, she's all over the press. She's everywhere. You know, she was in a commercial in Super Bowl now, her and Ben Affleck. And she's still here. And she works her ass off. And she's still relevant. And she's still relevant. And that's the part of the of the Jennifer Lopez of it all that, like, you have to commend her. Yeah. Because she works her ass ass off you know despite the odds yeah right despite the odds because she's also she's now a woman in her 50s she looks hot as hell and she could move better than somebody half her age but even despite that you know people yeah i've already seen the comments like oh you know she's she she could be a grandma well so what and so what she looks freaking amazing and she's awesome you know um so i think that she deserves more acknowledgement than she gets you know what? She's not the greatest singer. There's a lot of people out there that don't have great voices and are musicians. She's not, you know, she's not Meryl Streep. Right. Right. And and I'm not even saying this in, as a diss. No, it's just not everybody can be Meryl Streep. <laughs> but here we are talking about her because she's a hard worker and she's she's very determined. She's ambitious. And, you know, I, I think that people, people really need to back off with her. You know, she came from absolutely nothing she came from the bronx yeah. nothing was given to her she you know she you know she worked hard she took the six every morning that's true <laughs> this is true i've taken the six and, and she is what she is now so i i don't know people need to cut her some slack like just freaking let the woman be and, well and, she's you know. almost the epitome of the of the latino work ethic yeah, you know, if you really stop and think about it, it's that whole thing of like, no, I'm gonna make it, and I'm gonna salir por alante, and then I'm gonna, okay, I'm dancing. Now I'm gonna do acting, and now I'm gonna sing, and now I'm gonna have a perfume, and now I'm gonna have a intimate line, and now I'm gonna have, you know, it, it's that it's yeah. that Latino work ethic hustle mentality that she epitomizes. Yeah. yeah, and you know what? Like her and Ben Affleck now, you know, good for them. You know, good for them. I love how you know they take you know a snapshot of Ben Affleck looking upset, and that's it. Oh, Ben Affleck wants out of his marriage you know when we know that literally it's a paparazzi's you know following them clicking you know they probably get like a thousand pictures in like 10 seconds yeah. and then they get the worst picture of him and then there's That's like the oh, one that makes the most money yeah so yeah jennifer lopez here's yes. her kawi well i'm gonna i'm gonna keep mine short and sweet i'm gonna give my last kawi to somebody we mentioned at the top of the show um i know some people have said his super bowl performance wasn't all that great but i'm gonna give it to usher I love that performance. I thought that performance was phenomenal. You know what? You only got 13 minutes and he ran through an entire career. He had costume changes. I'm pretty sure that the undershirt he was wearing was part of his Skims line promotion thing. He roller skated. I mean, what more do you want from the man? Like, honestly, there were people be, you know, being thrown all around. Like, it was just, I, I, I was entertained for 13 minutes. He came in. He did his thing. He left. And you know what? Now he's on tour. 
so God bless Usher. They call uh, and, me U S H E R R A Y O M D. No, M O N D. M O N D. What did you want to do with me? <laughs> so, yeah, so Usher. I mean, look, uh, it, it, he's our age, and I think I'm still tired from watching the 13 minute uh, performance. So, have Usher's at it. always been good. You know, the thing about have Usher is that he's always been really consistent. Like, he's yeah, you, he's never had like a low peak. He was. Never he, had, he's never had like a low, like a like. No, like, I mean, no. obviously, he had his commercial peak with confessions and like everything that goes yeah. up. No, but so. I mean, but I mean, as a performer, like yeah. he's never had like. No, that. no, no, no. He he's he always he's gives great. it all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's he's up there. Yeah. I, I well, we talked about this last week. I I think that he, um, in terms of a, a performer, he's yeah. up there with one with one of the greats. Yeah, absolutely. Know? Or some yeah. of the greats, I mean, absolutely. So. And that's why they deserve both of them. Cowie Lemon Lime. Yes, they both done the Super Bowl. They both have. Yes. Mm-hmm. Anyway, everybody, well, we hope this was a full-packed episode. It was. It was a long episode. We hope you listen, <laughs> laugh, and learn. As always, remember to grab your uh, patelito, your croqueta, and your kawi. And thank you for joining us so much, everybody. Have a great weekend. Uh, cuídense, mi gente. Bye-bye. Pero Let Me Tell You is co-hosted by Darian Borges and Ismael Llano. Produced by Ismael Llano. And our theme, Pero Let Me Tell You Freestyle, is composed by Michael Angelo Lomlaplex the official gay guy. And don't forget to subscribe and leave us a review on iTunes.